thanks everybody for coming out. I know it's getting late in the day, so I'm impressed we've got 20, 25 people here, I, I think. Um, I'm Dan Reeser from the Akala and Karura team. Um, our team's mostly based in Auckland, New Zealand. We've been building in the polka dot and substrate ecosystem for a couple years now and, and kind of waiting to get things rolling on polka dot um, once parachain slot auctions roll out, which I'll be explaining today. Um, I'm going to be covering kind of some, some introductory kind of basics to polka dot. There's a lot to cover, so I'm going to move relatively quickly, but there's some words that you may hear, some jargon that constantly gets thrown out, so I think it's good to clear, thing, cl clear things up. Um, we're going in a little bit of a reverse order. We started with some like technical talks with Moonbeam, um, kind of in the middle with, with Centrifuge, and then I'm going to go kind of back to the basics with um, everything related to, to polka dot. So first I wanted to start with just the existing kind of um, challenges that have been hindering blockchain over the last five to ten years. First, blockchains haven't been able to communicate, so the, the concept of interoperability. Um, scalability has obviously been a challenge on many networks. Um, the, the difficulty in bootstrapping your network with security and finding validators and getting this whole robust set of validators to actually secure your chain is a difficult process and something that um, the people who built Polkadot didn't believe should be something that developer teams should have to really deal with. Um, another, another thing that we're working on is the ability to customize at the blockchain layer. Um, many existing networks have kind of gone with a one-size-fits-all approach, building things like DeFi and gaming identity all on the same chain. Um, Polkadot's taking a different approach where we're kind of betting on customization and building chains for specific use cases. Um, governance, so off-chain governance or no governance at all has been another issue with, with previous networks that Polkadot's trying to solve with on-chain governance, an elected council, and a whole voting system. And then last but definitely not least is upgrades. Um, the ability to upgrade a, your chain without a fork is a pretty massive advantage when you look kind of longer term and what that actually means over time. Um, so that's something that I'll, that I'll explain a little bit more um, in this presentation. So as you probably know, you probably definitely know if you're here at the Ethereum conference, um, Polkadot was started by Gavin Wood who created Solidity, built the EVM, uh, worked with Vitalik back, um, back in the day, and then decided to start Polkadot with uh, Rob and Peter here. Um, Gavin went on to create the Web3 Foundation and Parity, which are kind of the two main organizations behind um, Polkadot and Kusama. Web3 hosts a lot of the research team, um, some developer relations teams. Parity is based in Berlin and has a lot of the developers who, ha who actually kind of work on the Polkadot and Kusama networks and Substrate itself. So what is Polkadot? At the most basic le level, Polkadot does two things. It connects blockchains together and it secures blockchains. And it's important to also talk about what is not Polkadot. Polkadot is not a smart contract platform. You don't build apps on Polkadot. And Polkadot is not a layer one blockchain, again, where you can build smart contracts or applications. Polkadot is what we refer to as a layer zero or a meta protocol. So I built this just to kind of show a comparison to other networks that we, we all know. So Polkadot being down here at the layer zero, and then you've got all these layer one parachains, as we call them, that are plugging into Polkadot or will plug into Polkadot for security and for interoperability. This is Akala, Moonbeam, Centrifuge, all three have just talked in the room, um, as well as several others. These are layer one chains like Bitcoin, like the current Ethereum setup, Solana, Near, and others. And then, of course, at the top level, you've got um, applications. So this is where you actually build applications in the Polkadot ecosystem. You build on top of parachains. You don't build on Polkadot. So Current is a fintech company in the U.S. building with Akala. Um, Sushi is building on Moonbeam. And then of course, on the Ethereum side, you've got everyone in DeFi, Compound, Aave, and the like building on that layer one chain. Some, some more Polkadot jargon. The team who built Polkadot apparently loved creating new words. Um, parachains are what you with ETH2 may know as shards. So Every one of these little gray squares around this uh, relay chain are, are blockchains, individual blockchains customized for a specific use case. Um, and then on the left, as I just referred to, the relay chain. So the relay chain is the, kind of the core of Polkadot, and this is what provides that interoperability and the security between all the parachains connecting to the network. 
And just to flip that diagram on its side, um, Polkadot here is the layer zero. You've got these layer one parachains here that are all connecting to Polkadot. And then all the applications, the liquidity are going to be accruing on top of these uh, parachains. And all are fully interoperable. So you will have, like Cassidy mentioned, you'll have centrifuge building with Akala. Maybe there's an integration of the Akala dollar stablecoin that's being used in, in centrifuge. Same with Sushi on Moonbeam. Sushi could have a trading pair with the AUSD stablecoin from Akala flowing over to Moonbeam and being used within Moonbeam. So all fully interoperable. Um, I'm not a developer, but I wanted to include just a few technical um, facts, I guess, if there's anyone who's more technical in the room. So Polkadot is, the blockchains on Polkadot are coded with a blockchain framework called Substrate. This is built with Rust. Um, all the parachains are, the code is compiling to Wasm. So when I mentioned um, the ability to upgrade without forks, Wasm is what enables teams to do this. And then heterogeneous sharding. So every shard or every parachain on Polkadot will be able to have its own unique state, transi state transition function, um, which is enabled by um, Substrate in the way that Polkadot was built. So the, the security of Polkadot, it's a proof of stake network. Currently, these are the stats that I pulled a couple nights ago. So we've got about 64% of the network currently staked in DOT, almost 300 active validators, and 545,000 active accounts on the network. Um, and, and also, going back to bridges like um, Cassidy was talking about from the centrifuge talk, there's a couple types of bridges that are being built currently in the Polkadot ecosystem. You've got one which is a Polkadot to another network. So for example, the Interlay Bitcoin bridge or the Snowfork ETH bridge, which will be huge for the collaboration between the Ethereum community and Polkadot. But then you can also actually build bridges directly to one of these individual parachains. So Akala, we just got a, a grant from the Compound team to build a, what they're calling a starport between Compound and Akala. So we'll be bringing DOT and a liquid form of stake DOT to Compound to be used in the Compound Gateway, which is their kind of multi-chain money market that they're building actually using the Substrate framework. Same with REN BTC. We have a bridge being built directly between Akala and REN BTC to bring, a, to bring Bitcoin into the Akala uh, DeFi ecosystem. So Kusama, um, many of you may have heard of Kusama. I, I love Kusama, I've worked a lot on it. And it's, it's confusing to people, so I created a couple slides here just to explain to you this kind of fairly new concept to the, to the industry. Um, Kusama is essentially the exact same thing as Polkadot. Built the same, the architecture is the same. Um, everything that I mentioned in the previous slides applies to Kusama. The main differences are that it's built for speed and experimentation. So Kusama's governance, for example, is about seven days versus Polkadot's 28. So it just takes a lot longer to get things through on Polkadot. If you're a developer that wants to move quickly, you can come and just move fast on Kusama. And just to reiterate that, this is kind of the, the standard model. You have a test net, you test things on test net, and then you move it to main net. The issue here is that if you build something on test net, you can think all you want that everything's going to be safe and work well once it hits main net. But you don't really know until it hits main net. And then if you have a problem there, what do you do? What Kusama did was introduce a step in the middle between testnet and mainnet for this experimental mainnet. So we have essentially two mainnets in the Polkadot ecosystem where you can test on the testnet, move it to Kusama, experiment there, see how everything works in a real value environment. And then you can move to Polkadot or you can actually run parallel networks on Polkadot and Kusama so that over time, every, every new code or every new product that you have, you ship it to Kusama first and then poke it out when you know it's going to be nearly perfect. And just as an example, so, so my team at Akala, we're building two parallel networks, and both will run together um, in parallel. So you have Akala being built on Polkadot. You have Karura being built on Kusama, which just launched, is launching this week. And these will be connected. There will be a bridge between Polkadot and Kusama, so value, data will flow between both networks, and we'll be able to operate both where Karura will essentially be making Akala as nearly as perfect as possible. So when it really boils down to it, these are kind of the flip side of what I showed in the beginning in terms of the challenges that Polkadot's going after. 
Um, we covered plenty about uh, these parachains, but just to reiterate, parachains are customized for, for specific purposes and all connecting into the relay chain. The thought is that there will be up to 100, potentially more than 100 parachains all connected to Polkadot when it's fully, kind of fully launched. Um, substrate, so I mentioned this is the framework that you're using to build blockchains on Polkadot or on Kusama. And it's kind of like a mu music equalizer if you want to think about it that way. You can tweak certain things up, tweak certain things down to get exactly the blockchain that you need for what you're trying to build on top of it. When it actually comes to how to build with Substrate, it's kind of like almost like drag and drop blockchain building where you can pick from all the pallets that the team at Parity has built as well as other teams in the ecosystem have built. Like Akala has been building um, some pallets, Chainlink built an Oracle pallet. You can basically go through and pick and choose what you want and what you need for your blockchain and then create that in your, in your runtime. Um, when you want to, say you build a new pallet or you want to add something new, this is where the forkless upgrade comes in and you can essentially upgrade your chain overnight without any hiccups. And this is what I mean uh, with substrate pallets. So you've got the layer zero meta protocol down here, Polkadot. Akala at layer one, we've built substrate pallets into the blockchain itself. So this is much different than applications in Ethereum where you're building apps on top of Ethereum. We're actually building our products as pallets in the blockchain itself. So the DEX, our stable coin, oracles and everything are, are pallets within the chain. And then when you go to the top, applications are able to plug into those pallets and leverage the DEX or le leverage the stable coin at the blockchain layer instead of um, at the application layer. So this unlocks a lot of um, composability um, between applications building on Akala. So you can build several applications that are all plugging into the same DEX liquidity or the same stablecoin because they're building on top of this uh, parachain. And because we're here at an Ethereum conference, I wanted to add this, um, just kind of a zoom in on the Akala EVM here. This is another pallet that's built into Akala where we're providing an Ethereum, a very similar Ethereum environment, probably about 99% similar to what you're used to on Ethereum, but we're definitely optimizing more for substrate. So you're going to be using a different extension called Polkadot.js, um, but you'll still have the same kind of, you can still deploy your Ethereum apps on Akala. Um, but what kind of optimizing for substrate allows us to do is to add um, subtle features for um, for DeFi specific use cases. So bring your own gas, I think is really cool. This is a, a tweak that we were able to make where if you're using the Snowfork bridge and you're bridging ETH over to Akala to use in the DEX, for example, if you put yourself in the shoes, like sitting at your computer, you bring ETH over, it's your first ever transaction on Akala. You don't have to go find ACA, the, the network token. You can pay the first fee in that wrapped ETH that you brought over from Ethereum which is a huge benefit to users. It's much easier. You, people shouldn't have to worry about going out and finding or buying ACA, sending it to the wallet, using it to pay the fee. Um, scalability, so this is what uh, the Web3 Foundation research team had come up with as kind of a theoretical max for scalability of Polkadot once all these parachains are, are launched in the same environment. Pretty significant, 166,000 uh, TPS when we when we're fully launched, we'll see um, what it actually comes out to when everything is is live. Um, on chain governance, don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this, but we've got on Polkadot and on Kusama, we've got councils that are elected by the token holders. Um, every decision that's made for the network is gone, is run through the council. It's proposed, discussed on a forum, and then enacted when the council actually votes um, to enable this. I um, mentioned this earlier, but this is a huge benefit to teams, especially when you're thinking about why build on this network versus this network. The, the ability to save a developer team the time of actually going out and recruiting hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars for a validator set is huge if you can just come plug into Polkadot, focus on building your products, focus on code, instead of doing all this work with um, all these uh, network validators. Um, and I was, I was pretty surprised to see this last night when I was making this. Um, Polkadot's done 24 network 
uh, runtime upgrades since launching. This is the equivalent of 24 forks that um, an existing network that doesn't have uh, forkless upgrades would have had to do. So we've, if you think about just over time, the compiling effects that that'll have for not only Polkadot, but every parachain building on Polkadot. So Akala, Moonbeam, Centrifuge, we can all upgrade our chain forklessly as well, so continuing to improve and improve over time. Okay, I've got five minutes, so the last thing that I wanted to touch on, uh, which is pretty timely right now, is these uh, parachain slot auctions have just been going on on Kusama. Um, it's a fascinating process and definitely worth reading more into um, after, after this presentation, but this is essentially how you launch on, on Polkadot or launch on Kusama. It's not, it's not like an ICO where anyone can just throw up a coin, put up a website, and raise a bunch of money. We as teams, we as parachain teams, actu actually have to work pretty hard to win an auction, to earn the right to launch on these networks because of the security that you get and the interoperability that you get from um, Polkadot and Kusama. These parachain auctions are essentially a bunch of parachain teams who are either, they either have a lot of KSM in Kusama's case, or they're involving their community in doing what we call a crowd loan to source KSM from their community that they can actually use as a bid in an auction against other teams. Um, what happens though is if you're a contributor from the community and you contribute KSM in a crowd loan, after 48 weeks, which is the duration of that slot that you get on Polkadot, it's like a lease, after 48 weeks that KSM is returned to you. So the only thing that you're giving up as a contributor is the staking returns that you would have been getting on that KSM had you not contributed it to the crowd loan. Oh, and then one other important point is that the contributions in KSM in Kusama's case or when Polkadot auctions start in Polkadot's case, whatever you raise, the KSM or the DOT, is never touched by the team. It's put in an account and kind of locked away as a, almost like a stake for that slot that you get on the network. So these are the first five teams that, that won the first five slots on Kusama. Um, Karura is the Akala implementation on Kusama. Uh, we were first, Moon River from the Moonbeam team came in, then Shiden, Kala, and Bifrost. Bifrost just won the fifth slot like two days ago. So we're kind of in a pause right now. The first five are, the first five chains are live. Um, at, for Karura, we're starting to launch our, our DEX. Actually, the liquidity providing for our DEX goes live tonight. The DEX trading goes live Friday. So this is all kind of happening as we speak. And pretty, I mean, substantial numbers that we saw um, in these crowd loans. I think everyone in the community was kind of shocked by what happened. But these five teams combined, when I mentioned these crowd loans where, where the community is backing those teams' bids, combined we raised 1.1 million KSM, which is yesterday night was the equivalent to 162 million USD. So pretty uh, significant numbers to, to pay attention to. Um, this is just a look at the, um, this is apps.karura.network. This is where the decks that will go live on Friday will be. Um, this is our swap product, similar to Uniswap, um, liquid KSM staking, so you can stake KSM and get a liquid version of that. And then we'll have a uh, stablecoin, fully crypto-backed uh, multi-collateral stablecoin on Karura. And then all of these things will go live on Akala as well once we've kind of um, won an auction on Polkadot and done all of our kind of learning and experimentation through um, Karura and Kusama. Cool, so one minute to spare. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, and I'm I'll also stay around and have, happy to answer questions in the room as well if you have them. Um, but appreciate the time. Um, thanks to the ETHCC team for inviting us here, like being willing to, to have Moonbeam, to have Centrifuge, to have Akala speak at an Ethereum conference. It's great to see the willingness to collaborate with other ecosystems. In the end, we're all kind of building this together. So appreciate it to the ECC team for, for inviting us. Thanks, guys.